Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. McCrary and this video is part four of the unit Biological Basis of Behavior and this particular video will cover psychoactive substances and how those substances impact the nervous system. So to start with, a psychoactive substance is a chemical that impacts the nervous system when it is consumed or taken into the body. It enters into the synapse and it changes or affects or it impacts the message in some way and it can alter someone's thinking it can alter someone's behavior it can alter someone's mood or consciousness or perception any type of brain message that's being sent through the central nervous system can be altered by a psychoactive substance when it's consumed and it enters the synapse. So to start with, one type of psychoactive substance is an agonist. And an agonist is any type of substance that when it enters the synapse, it acts like the body's neurotransmitters. So an agonist can be chemically shaped in such a way that it fits into a receptor site. So when it fits into that receptor site, it sends a brain message for the brain like a neurotransmitter would. And if you remember from the previous video, receptor sites are actually shaped a lot like a keyhole with a key. Uh, specific neurotransmitters will fit perfectly into their receptor site. They won't fit into other receptor sites. So a dopamine neurotransmitter is going to fit into a dopamine receptor site. So an agonist is a substance that's chemi chemically similar to a neurotransmitter, and it's designed to act like a specific neurotransmitter. There are substances called opiates that are agonists for endorphins. And so what opiates do are opiates are shaped similarly and form to the body's endorphins. And if you remember, endorphins are the body Body's message about pain relief. So when an endorphin crosses the synapse, it communicates a message about relieving pain and it gives a euphoric sensation. So when an opiate enters the nervous system, it binds with an endorphin receptor site and it sends a message about pain relief. Opiates, there are prescription opiates like morphine that a doctor might prescribe in a, a situation of severe pain to help um, improve that person's feelings when they're uh, maybe after a surgery, they might have um, these uh, pain relieving medications that act like the body's endorphins. But there's also uh, 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 illegal substances like heroin, which is an opiate, which has that, that same chemical shape. It fits into the endorphins receptor site and it creates this message like an endorphin would about pain relief and euphoria. Now the issue though with uh, opiates, the consequence of opiates, is that when those opiates enter the synapse, the body stops producing its own endorphins. And so when someone stops taking those opiates, sometimes they have an extreme sense of pain because it's inadvertently suppressed the body's own uh, production of endorphins. But all of that to say an agonist. An agonist acts like a neurotransmitter that's in the body. It's shaped like it and it makes a message go. Agonist is agonist. It makes the message go. The next type of psychoactive substance is an antagonist. An antagonist gets into the synapse. It's a substance that enters the synapse and blocks a receptor site. And it will block a specific receptor site. So it will stop a specific message from sending. Uh, you are probably familiar with this type of antagonist. You just might not have realized what it was doing in your body. Caffeine is an antagonist. Caffeine enters your nervous system and it blocks the adenosine receptor. So you might not know what adenosine is and yet you actually don't need to for AP psychology. It's not one of our neurotransmitters that we need to know, but adenosine sends messages in the body about calming, slowing down, uh, just, uh, it's just a depressing slowing down. It's, it's, it's a message that kind of, it will happen before sleep and it slows the body down. 
But when caffeine enters the synapse, it stops that calming message. And so if you've ever taken caffeine before, it keeps you going and it keeps you alert. And it's actually sliding into the adenosine uh, receptor site and it's not allowing messages to go across about calming the body. So antagonist, I think of a, a villain in a story who maybe is stopping the character from doing what they need to do. And so the antagonist is stopping a brain message. Another type of, of psychoactive substance is a reuptake inhibitor. And a reuptake inhibitor enters the synapse and this substance actually stops reuptake. So reuptake is a natural process. Reuptake just sucks up the leftover neurotransmitters. But when reuptake is stopped, what will happen is all of those leftover neurotransmitters will continue to be sent across. The neurotransmitters will be released, but they won't go back up. So this will continue the message uh, to be moving across the synapse. A common reuptake inhibitor is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and that's actually what's being shown in this diagram. Prozac is a selective serotonin rehibitor. It gets into the synapse and it blocks reuptake. So it will allow serotonin out, you can see it coming out, but it won't allow it to go back. So serotonin hangs out in the synapse and it continues to send messages about mood. There are other ways to classify substances. So we were just going through a way to classify substances as what they're doing in the synapse. Another way to classify a substance is its effect on the body. And you can classify them as stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens on how they are producing effects in the body. Stimulants are going to increase the activity in the central nervous system. So that means increasing your heart rate, increasing your blood pressure, increasing your um, uh, alertness. It might make you agitated, energized in high amounts. Uh, stimulants are going to produce maybe even jitters, uh, inability to sleep, maybe impulsive, uh, but a stimulant is going to stimulate you and energize and arouse. Those are going to, to be the effects of a stimulant. Depressants are types of substances that produce similar effects of slowing down. So they are going to reduce the activity of the central nervous system. They're going to lower blood pressure and decrease heart rate. And they're going to relax and subdue. But in high doses, people will become drowsy and even sedated. So stimulants in high doses can, I mean, if very high doses or overdose can cause heart attack if it's increasing the heart rate too high. Depressants, the opposite in, 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 in large amounts and high doses in an overdose can slow the body down until the body stops. So stimulants and depressants, they are just a classification for the effects of substances. And substances can fit into these categories based on how they impact the body. Another type of classification is a hallucinogen. And a hallucinogen is a substance that will create a, an altered perception. So it might change someone's thought processes, uh, create delusional thoughts, maybe even produce false sensations, feelings of touch or sight or sound and alter reality in some way. That would be a hallucinogen. Sometimes they're called psychedelic substances. So you can see how they are classified here in this chart, this overlapping chart, where these substances have effects that arouse, these substances have effects that sub subdue, and these substances have effects that create an altered perception. So these are just ways to classify. Uh, hallucinogen, stimulant, and depressant are classifications based on the substance's effect on the body. And lastly are consequences of uh, substances that affect our nervous system. And doctors and psychiatrists and pharmacists are all going to take into account tolerance and dependence and withdrawal whenever they are determining dosage and how long they are prescribing a medication for. So these terms, what they mean, a tolerance is when someone takes a substance, 
uh, a tolerance can develop, meaning that they have to take more of a substance in order to get the same effects. It's kind of like their body becomes immune to that substance. And so in order to have the effects, they need to take more. And so a doctor is going to have to consider it, consider the tolerance level when they are um, considering dosage over time. Um, and that is tolerance. Dependence is when someone becomes reliant on a substance for their body functioning. They can become reliant mentally or physically where their body starts to adapt to that substance. And when they stop taking that substance, they are, their body is not functioning the way that it should. And so it drives them to take that substance again um, because they have developed a need for it, either psychologically or physically. And then lastly, a withdrawal is a discomfort. It's a, a, a pain or an uncomfortable feeling that occurs when the person abstains from the substance or after a period of time of not taking that substance, they can experience a withdrawal. And depending on the substance, the withdrawal may be more or less severe and might last shorter or longer. But if a person can get through that withdrawal period, however long it is, depending on the substance, sometimes that withdrawal can become more bearable if they can get through it. But a lot of times what happens is the withdrawal is so uncomfortable or so severe that it drives the person back to the substance to relieve that discomfort. So in this video, what you should have learned is the way that substances interact in the synapse. They can be an agonist and cause a message to go. They can be an antagonist and stop a message in the synapse. They can be a reuptake inhibitor. They can stop reuptake from occurring. They can also be classified by their effects on the body overall, whether that's stimulating effects, depressing effects, um, or hallucinating effects. And then you also learned about the consequences of tolerance, dependence, and withdrawal. I hope that was helpful. That was psychoactive substances and the nervous system.